Righto, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the process of polishing your road car. So I was going to do one of my cars, but they're probably a little bit too shiny, and Dale come over to do a, a voiceover the other yep. day, and I went, um, Dale, <laughs> how long since you polished your car? Because it really is the perfect candidate. So yep. you bought this new. Yes, yeah, my wife bought this new, so it's 10 years old, 2014 model. Yep. And, um, yeah, and it's... it's Daily, daily driver. Lives outside. Yep, lives outside. Doesn't go in a garage. Yep, it's not garage. Cops all the elements. And I know Dale sponged a bit of product off me every now and again, but it probably hasn't had a decent tidy up for what, four or five years. Uh, at least that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's been so what we're going to do? We're going to give it a wash, give it a clay bath, yep. and um, we'll get it in the shed, mask it up. Yep. Work our way through the uh, the Merca polish ranges, hmm. and it's Friday night tonight. So tonight and probably tomorrow night, Saturday night, we should be able to knock it over. Yeah, be interesting to see how it comes up. So let's get into it. Paint's about as flat as my golf swing. Now there's a lot of trendy stuff around nowadays that you can use. Um, unfortunately, I've got rainwater on the tank here, off the shed, um, and I'm just going to take the bulk of it off with the hose, and then we're going to hit it up with a, um, a chamois, not a chamois, a sponge, and then um, with some soap and just any quality um, automotive car wash, and then we'll um, show you what happens with the clay bar. Right, oh, Dale. Mm. Needs TLC, Howard. Zero beating. <laughs> Zero beating, all right. So, clay bar. An interesting product. I hadn't used it until probably 10 years ago and I'd heard about it. It really is, I guess, some sort of synthetic product. And I've used this a little bit before on something. Um, once again, most of the major brands make one. This is a synthetic clay bar that Mother's brought out and it works pretty good as well. Um, same process, just it's a synthetic um, rubberized one rather than the proper clay bar. So I'll give that a wash. What I'm going to do now, and it almost seems a bit weird to do this, and you think it's got to be scratching it or something, but it doesn't seem to do anything. And you can see there, that black is the fallout that's in the paint. When I rub my hand over that now, it's quite smooth, where down here it's quite sort of dry, sandy feel. So you just got to keep enough of that soapy water to lubricate it. A few bugs there. This one's good with the bugs. The reason I'm doing this, even though I'm going to polish it quite aggressively, the value with using the clay bar is all those little bits of contamination. When you polish, they tend to drag on the lamb's wool or the foam if you're using foam. And by using the clay bar, it gets rid of those contaminants off of the surface. Um, and it makes the, that first cutting process a, a hell of a lot easier. So I'm just feeling that now. If I feel something, it might be a, a bit of a bug, a bit of tree sap, anything at all that might be on there. Well, that's pretty good. Not too many chips, though. Looks pretty good. No, try to avoid the, the dirt roads. Sitting up the back of cars on the... I don't know what it is. The GT's got some good ones in it. Every time we go down the freeways, seems like a truck's throw something off at us. Yeah, we do a lot of trips to Melbourne in this car, so it does a lot of freeway mileage. So you can see there, 
just starting to pull all that bits of rubbish out. I'll get up here and do the roof. Oh, you ought to feel the back. So down here where the, you can actually see it, um, the fallout because of the turbulence at the back of the car. But like I said, it's quite amazing. As long as you keep it lubricated with that soapy water, you just keep pulling the, the contaminants off it. So I'll do the lights, probably do the glass with the plastic one, the foam one. Ooh. You got a boat, Dale? No. No? Trailer. trailer. Got a trailer. Nah. Just got a little bit of competition with the neighbour with the lawnmower, but before I wipe it off, or Dale starts wiping it off, I'll just show you how it's zero beating at all. So it's just pretty tired, but we'll get in now and um, get it wiped off, get it into the shed, and start our process once we've got a pizza into us first. Righto, so there. A lot of people look at this and go, what are you going to repaint the car? And I remember we had a lot of comments when we were doing um, Floss XC for Summer Nats because we were still polishing right up to the event. But I mean, the reason I do this is I'm going to spend probably an hour, hour and a half, and I don't know, 30 bucks worth of product to fully mask the car up because I'm going to spend quite a lot of time now polishing this with three or four different grades of polish. And what I don't want is all of that polish and bits and pieces all going in here and all in amongst the black because then I'm going to have to spend another day trying to detail the car up. So this really is firstly about stopping all that rubbish going in, all the polishes, but it also means that if I'm buffing here, I don't run the buff up over this plastic and change the look of it because it will affect the finish on that rubber, especially being 10 years old. So it's worth spending the time so we'll get it all masked up, I'll cover the wheels with some plastic and then we'll get the buff out and start making a mess. Now a couple of things, um, stuff like this, your, your local um, paint supplier um, as in automotive paint supplier. You can buy this sort of masking in a couple of different grades. There's a really thin one, I use the little bit heavier one. It's quite cost effective. It's good just for keeping dust off things. I'm just cutting a few bits up to do wheel covers. Once you've got a box, you'll be really happy you bought it because it's just so much quicker. And if I'm painting a car and you're just doing a little bit at the back, this is just so quick. And then the other thing is these once again, they're very cost effective. I can't remember exactly how much, but it's less than $200. Um, if you've got room to store it, buy yourself one, get your rolls of paper, and I can tell you, you're gonna save so much time and so much heartache than trying to do bits and pieces. And I could tell lots of stories about newspaper because I fell for that with Rock 3 back in 1990. I masked all the graphics up with newspaper. I only find after I'd cleared it that we actually had newspaper print on the blue, so use the proper stuff and you'll save time and money. Uh, righto, so the process. Now, because this is so bad, and as you've seen earlier, no booting whatsoever, I'm gonna use lamb's wool. Now, this is a Merca product, been used in a long time. It's really, really soft. It's like the lamb's wool you have to lay your baby down on, rather than the twisted, knotted lamb's wool. So I'm gonna use that with number 45 and to make it fairly simple because it goes from coarse to um, fine I guess is the word they use. So we're going to go 
45 with the lands wall. This is like a grey pad, so this is black, this one's grey. So I'm going to use 45, so I mark my pads so I don't mix them up. And then we're going to go to 12, and as you can see that's had a fair bit of use, but I'm going to use that. Um, you can just wash them out, something that's got, um, I use um, truck wash, seems to take the polish out, although these are water based, so these you'd wash out just with a bit of soapy water. Um, then we go to 12, so heavy cut, medium, and then the last one, number five, is the final finishing product. And once you've done that, you just then need to put a, a quality wax, and we'll talk about waxes later because that's a really complex thing about it. So I'm going to use the old Azito um, Direct Drive um, Rotary. I like those, a lot of people don't like them. They, everyone says they make swirls and all that sort of stuff. I'm using lens wool. I don't care if I've got swirls. I'm trying to cut the surface back to a, a clean painted finish. And then I'm going to work through my polishes with the foam pads to actually bring the shine up. So cutters, cutters, softer pad with a medium polish still on this machine. And then I'll go to a couple of options. This is a, a sander and it's five millimeter oscillation. I find that really good. I use that on Boss XC without the, the vacuum, just put the power on it. And then I bought this as a bit of a trial and I found it really good. So when we were doing um, the Camaro, uh, everyone's bus seemed to be somewhere else. And I bought this on the way up the PPG. Didn't really research it too much. This is an eight mil um, oscillation and something like the Roots Bigfoot's about 16, I think. So. You know, the little pigtail you get when you're sanding, this is five mil, this is eight mil, the roots is 16. I found this one really good with the number five and I'll probably use that on this because it then takes those swirl marks out. So that's the process and I'll talk about it as I go through in more detail. So I've had a bit of a go at that bonnet with the, um, the light lambs wool, this one and really wasn't having a lot of luck because it obviously has got a lot of oxidization, but a huge amount of scratching. So I've pulled the big one out and put that on and you can see there now, and you can see the swirls in that. And I mean, I'm not fussed about that. What I'm trying to do is to cut out all of these marks, probably from when the car's been washed, when it's been really dirty. And because it's got no protection, it doesn't slide off, you know, the grime sticks in. So then you've got to rub it harder, which means you end up with marks. So that big lambs wool is taking out the scratches. And it just means we'll add another stage where now I'll, once I get this done with the big pad, I'll go back to the smaller one with the lambs wool. So if you're using something like this, it tends to burn up a lot of product and that's just because it's drying out. So I've just got a squirty bottle with some normal water um, and I'm just using that to lubricate the pad and to keep that cutters still working because if we keep loading it up with more cutters, more cutters, all it does is fill the pad up. Uh, a little bit of water just helps it work. I'll have to hit Terry up for one of his aprons, won't I, if I'm going to use this big pad again.
you're going to use a big heavy pad like this, you need to make sure you're not getting things too hot. So that's quite good there at the moment. The heat comes from the speed and obviously the friction when you're cutting it off. You can see how dry that is. So that's why I'm using that bit of moisture. So just keep that, it, there's plenty of polish on the pad, but it's just all dried out. So if you're going to use a pad like this, you've got to come off this edge. If you drag, come this way, if I tip it that way and come across it, it'll actually burn that edge because this is very, very aggressive and we really need to make sure we know what we're doing. So we're coming off this face. When I go up into here, I've got to watch that top edge and then I'm staying away from this double ridge here and I'll use the smaller one because I just can't have enough control and what I don't want to do is burn an edge. So I'll go back to the smaller lambs wool now and give it a go with that. So same product, 45. This is the coarsest one in this range. There's probably other brands that would have a coarser one, um, but this I find more than enough. It's more about the pad that it's on rather than the polish. camera's picking up, there's a couple of marks here that potentially could have been um, looking at the shape of them, something sitting in some water, you know, like a watermark, more up here. May even need to, to sand those out with some 3000. But initially I'm just going to try and get the whole lot cut and then we'll come back and look at those individually. Hope you're enjoying the show, watching what we're doing with Dale's Commodore. So these are the products. If you're looking to purchase some, jump on to ppgrefinish.com.au, then click on distributors, and that'll show you the distributors that are close by you. Give them a call and grab some product, and good luck with your job. Right, so I've done a bit of experimentation. So what we're looking at now, this is, this half of the bonnet is with the gold lambs wool. So you can clearly see the swell marks because it's cutters and that's with the 45. And then the next panel up through the middle here, this section, is that same polish with the foam pad. And this particular paint, and every paint I, I polish reacts differently. And this paint, whatever it is, seems to like the foam pad a lot more than the lens wool. So it's actually looking quite good. And then this final side over here, I've ran the, the black 12 with the softest of the Merca black pads and that's starting to look real good. So, I mean, there's stuff in it that's not gonna come out. There's some marks um, that are probably from bird droppings like this one here. Um, that's not gonna come out, it's too deep. If I try and sand that out, there's a good chance I'll go through the clear and it's just not worth doing that. But I mean, it's come a long way in a short period of time. The only problem is that's the first panel. So there's a bit to do. All right, so I've got a little scratch here on the back door that Dale tells me that it was probably his lad David on a push bike that caused that many years ago. So I'm gonna use the little Merca sander with this little fella. So it's two and a half thousand wet. And I'll give that a quick sand, and if I can get rid of it without running out of clear, we'll be able to just buff it back up. So I've just got to keep an eye on how deep it is and whether we can get away with it. Right, so I'll give that a little sand. Now I'm a bit worried about taking too much out of it because I don't know how much clear's on here. Traditionally, there's not a lot. So I've just flattened it off a bit, and I'm going to hit that with a buff now and see what we've done. 
Now, I haven't been going to go all the way with that, but what we've done is we've got rid of the satin look and made it all shiny, but you can still see that something happened there. But like Dale said, it is a daily and it is stored outside, so that'll do for now, because I don't really want to cut through it and have that whole drama. So now we're just working on the one down here where it hit the gate. So I thought I'd just do a bit of a catch up to um, where we're up to. So we ended up working on the Friday night about eight till 11 with two of us and a couple other people just hanging around helping out a tiny bit. So about six hours. And what we did was obviously mask up and then I messed about with those different pads until I worked out what this paint likes. And it's quite interesting that when you're doing this sort of stuff that some paints just like different pads. So I showed you where I went to this real heavy pad in the landfall and then the lighter one. And in the end, I grabbed one of the, the yellow waffle pads, um, which is the heaviest of their foam pads. And that worked out the best. So I've, I've pretty much used that pad on um, the direct drive, just the rotating to get the heavy cut work done. And I've gone over the whole car with that. And then we've gone to the gray. So this is a new one. So um, with that same polish, we've gone to that gray pad. You might just grab the box for that. And we've used um, a couple of different oscillating polishes. And pretty much what I had and what I showed you earlier. So that's the black M waffle. I presume that's medium. Um, and that's worked really good. So we've double teamed that. Um, I was on the, the Ryobi, the eight mil, and Dale was on the, the Merca five mil. And we've used that with the 45 to get rid of the swirl marks. And across the back here, that's pretty much off that machine. So it's got a nice polish and we've got rid of you know 90 percent of the marks and what we're doing now is we're just putting the black number 12 and we're using um, the soft black pad and you can see that bonnet is done now and the roof so that's just um, not too much effort in the sense of how many you know how much you actually leave it on there for because I'm a very firm believer if you want a really good shine then you work the paint for longer, um, but this is a street car that we're trying to make shiny that'll beat up and be easy to wash, not turn it into a show car. So we're using the number 12 um, on that um, oscillating pads, and now we're about, well, we've got to finish the whole car. We'll probably grab some dinner then, and then we'll go on and do number five, and then we'll seal it up with the wax. Righto, we're making a bit of progress now. So we've just done um, coated the number five. Dale's just rubbing that off. Biggest workout he's had for a while. How are you doing, fella? Got muscles I didn't know I had, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> what to me I'm sensing is we're starting to see some depth now. So, you know, we've used cutters and we've used a mid polish. Now we've gone number five, which is like that final. So we still haven't got a wax or a sealer on it, but it is definitely going deeper and there's still a few fine scratches and things that we made the decision not to take a whole lot of paint off trying to chase out one little scratch or something on a roof or whatever. But we've just unmasked the chrome there and it's looking pretty good though. Yes, and I had to talk really hard to persuade you to go, it's okay Howard, it is a daily driver, it is 10 years old, it doesn't live in a garage. So much against Howard's advice, we've left some of the little scratches and that, but it's looking. And I mean, it's pretty straight considering, yep. what's it done, 100 and... Nearly 160 160,000 Ks, and it's probably only got, I reckon the PDA, PDR guy could probably take about three or four little marks out. And um, it almost looks like it's had a respray. It does. So what we're gonna do now is, um, I'll probably pull that masking off. No, I decided I won't do that yet. So we're gonna wax it now. So. People always ask me about waxes and ceramics and synthetics and all those things. What I might do is just grab a couple of products out of the cupboard that I've had and talk about 
the different options you've got and where I think that, you know, what you use based on what the car's gonna be doing. So I'll grab those and then we'll have a little chat about that. Right, so we've got just about everything out of the cupboard now because what I'm doing now, and I said I'd talk about polishes, or waxes I should say, because we've now finished the polishing process. So previous to the Merca product, um, I was using this one here, the Mothers. So that's a micro polishing glaze, and it's when you read the label it says it's designed to fill. So it has a filler in it that fills all the micro scratches when you're sort of getting down to that stage. The number five in the Merca doesn't actually have a filler, but it's such a fine polish that you get that really deep shine, but you're still polishing the product, you're still polishing the, the paint. So what we're looking at here, when we look at what we've got, this is the actual paint that's shining. Now, if I'm doing show car work, that's where I finish because I find that when if I go to add any of these other products, so over the years, the reason I had this tin here is I've had that a very long time, I used to always love a Canubra wax, and it is exactly that, it's, it's a wax, it's a paste. Um, I'll get Dale to pull a lid off that while I'm talking. And the difficulty with that is, is that it's quite oily. Um, so when you actually go to apply it and then buff it off, it's very difficult to get it off. And I've always found that it takes probably, you know, two to three washes before you get rid of that oily film that is the wax. But what the reason you're putting it on is to protect um, the paint. So the next stage to that was then they brought out like a synthetic, and I used to use this one, and I used that for a lot of years, hence the old bottle. So it's a mixture of Canubra wax and a synthetic wax, um, and then the new version of that now is this ceramic wax. So once again, it's a mixture of the new advanced technologies, including ceramic, along with a wax. And then you can do, and you've heard me talk about the ceramic wash and coat. Now, like I was saying, with the show cars, um, I don't put anything at all on. But then you're not protecting against the elements, um, you know, bird droppings, those sorts of things. So what we're going to do with Dale's is put some of this new generation stuff on it. And that, I believe, should be good for probably six months if he's true to form, ideally, you either use a wash that continues to add a wax to it. If you're not doing that, then you really need to sort of give it a clay bar because it's outside all the time and then put some sort of wax back over to seal it so that all of those things don't break down your actual paint. So we're gonna put that on with a machine. I'm just, I've just started doing it. So I'm gonna use one of the soft black pads on that um, orbital and we'll wax on, wax off. And then we can unmask, have a clean up and we're um, all done. Right, so that's pretty much a wrap. So we've put the wax on there now and obviously demasked it and give it a bit of a clean. I mean, the reality is now, the car now needs a detail. So we haven't done door jams. We haven't done, um, you know, engine bay or anything like that. And with the pair of us on it for the two nights, you're looking at about 14 hours plus the product. So if you wonder why car detailers charge you a couple of grand to do a ceramic coating is they've got to get to this point just before the wax before they put their ceramic on because the ceramic doesn't correct the paint surface, it only puts a sealer on it. So that's pretty much the size of it and we, we didn't mess about, did we Darth? No Howard, raised the, raised the sweat. So it was um, an interesting process, so a Friday and a Saturday night and it will now hold that shine for some time. And Dale's just gonna find himself a nice wash and wax, something that keeps that topped up and it'll beat up nice. Mm. And- um, Convince the wife to sell it now, that's the hard part. Now we gotta do is <laughs> yeah, convince the missus he, he shouldn't sell it because that was the reason it sort of started. 
So thanks for joining us again. And um, hopefully you might um, pick up a few tips out of that. If you've got your own car to do or family member or something, that's the process we're using and getting good results. Thanks, Howard. Appreciate your efforts. <laughs> no problem, Dale. That's good. Your eyebrows are good. Yeah, go on, just check that. Looks like someone's been parking by feel. <laughs> A bit of braille parking, do you yeah, think? Looks like it.